you're, you're working on. And I'm aware of it. I see you know, what you're trying to do. And I see what has to be done. Um, and I'm hoping that uh, with the right guidance and the right understanding of principles, of concepts, you'll be able to teach yourself. My whole deal is that I think what you are doing right now, all of you, is you're kind of like a farmer in the field who is collecting crops. That is to say, you're getting as much foodstuffs and information that you possibly can in order to nourish yourself over months or even years. Ideally, whenever you study anywhere in particular, particularly for short periods of time, it's very important to come away with concepts, with understandings, that give you a framework within which to work. Specifics like what fingering and what bowing and you know, things of that kind, they change even within yourself from month to month and year to year. So those are maybe a little less important than conceptual issues. And I, I will try, have tried, to break things down to some pretty fundamentals, uh, which bear repeating and which bear uh, exploring a better understanding. So we know physiologically, for example, uh, what it is to pull a bow across a string, pull it and push it across a string, and what's involved in doing that seemingly simple task, which is not at all simple. And how it impacts the entire body, and what is required optimally, physiologically, uh, by the string, by the bridge, by the instrument, you know, forces outside of ourselves, if you will, and how we need to fit into our body, which is flexible and malleable, into those rather confined uh, and predetermined uh, criteria. Okay? So the predetermined criteria, for example, of drawing a bow across a string parallel to the bridge. I think we would all agree in this room that that is an absolute right. However, there are all kinds of things to get in the way, like the fingers, the wrist, the elbow, the arm. And one of the issues that you have right now is that it's very difficult for you to keep this guide. It's almost like uh, a train whose track is not exactly straight. So. Although the train is going straight because it has a suspension, the, the wheel is actually doing this, which makes the pit passengers in the train sway. We've all felt that, right? But there's no stability, right? You want to, ideally in a train ride, sit down and not have any concept of this sideways motion, right? It increases your play. In your playing, this, is an issue. This is an issue. That is to say that the fingers serve as the shock absorbers of your arm and forearm and whole arm and back successfully enough so that they really do absorb the shock and none of it ever gets to the string or a little, a little possible gets to the string. Okay. The other thing is, and we were talking a lot about this the other day about using your body, right? You could use your body. I mean, look, look at our situation. We're stuck on the floor, okay? We've got an end pin in the floor. We've got our feet on the ground. We've got our bum on the chair. We're grounded, okay? What can we move? Well, we can move this. I mean, as opposed to a violinist who has everything he or she can move, literally, okay? We don't have that. So, we have to find ways to identify elements of our body that allow us movement and allow us this leverage and this counter leverage and this exertion and release. Most of it is upper body. In other words, from here on. We also have this, the basque, the, 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 the sway from one side to the other, which we can literally roll on our, on our bum from one side to another, right? To get that weight. The other thing that we have to use a lot of is the candle leverage of a bow pulling one direction and a weight resisting against it in the opposite direction, creating friction, because friction creates sound. Okay? And we want friction that is weight-based, not pressure-based, because what happens when we have friction 
that's pressure based is we have tension. And tension is our enemy. Because it makes us stiff, it makes us unable to be fluid. And we need to be fluid to shift, to do so many, many, many other things, even to let the music flow. Music cannot flow without us being malleable, without us being loose. Okay? So those are the mechanics of some of the things that I think you, you need right away. And that, by the way, not only affects the bow, it also affects your shift. Your shifts generally are anxious, what I'd say, for you know, word anxious. That is to say, don't give yourself enough time. You have much more time than you think you have. And it's always the note before the arrival, not the arrival itself that you need to consider. And this is very, very important. Um, I always remember the statement from, from Pierre Gorski, who said, the tiger, before he leaps, stops. It's true. You know? Tiger doesn't walk along and then attack. Tiger maybe, maybe uh, stalks, but then, you know, then when he's ready to go, he, he measures. And then he goes. Okay? So the note before the shift is the one on which we need to drop our weight in order to have this rebound. The best visual imagery I can give you is that of a trampoline, where by virtue of how much weight you can drop yourself down, you have that much more lift. And if you're stiff going down, you have no lift. Ever been on a trampoline? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know what the feeling is, right? The more you can let yourself go, and it's hard to trust the trampoline first, because you feel, oops, what happens? You know, if you can trust the trampoline, then by dropping yourself into the trampoline, all of a sudden you have this incredible weightlessness, this lightness of being, right? And that is kind of the feeling that you need to have before each shift. So if I were you, I would identify, and there are plenty of shifts in this movement, identify every single note you know, there is a pre-shift note. And make sure you have this established a down spot, which starts from here, where literally you collapse in and then lift up. Often associated with a breath, a breath out. So, and the up becomes part of an, a, a respiration, a breath. Okay. That will help you. Now, just something very, very mechanical, which is a very simple exercise I strongly recommend along this line to every person, every day, when you practice your scales, is doing scales in octaves. Shifts, octaves. I don't need two note octaves. Okay? What I'm talking about is that you, you, you play your... I should play my cello. Uh, that you play your scale... Gesture. We'll just try that. Exaggerated, grossly, as we always have to do in order to really feel something. Exaggerated, 